six, 35 years it's been here in Northwest Indiana. In the last 22 years it's been right here in Family Christian Center in Munster. But this year is going to be spectacular. There are changes. There are set changes. Wait till you see there's a, there's a huge change that's going to happen that is going to excite you. So everybody, everybody, we need makeup people, we need ushers, we need security people, but we need you to act. Bring your children, all ages, babies, young people. Let us put a costume on you. Let me train you to be an actor or an actress. Everybody is welcome. Sign up. You got to come. You got to come. You got to come. Sign up. It's going to be great. You want to be an usher? You want to be a traffic control? You want to be in concessions? You want to be in makeup? You want to be in wigs? You want to be on the set? You want, whatever you want to do. Come on, everybody. It's the 50th year. You remember when everybody, you know, everybody that's a part of Jesus and Nazareth, we give them free tickets. So when you come and participate, you get to have a blessing of inviting someone in all the performances. We're doing 10 performances. It's going to be great. And then we're doing a special performance on the 50th, for the 50th performance where many cast members from all the other cities that I've done it in, I've done it in 22 cities. They're coming to join with us on the last performance of the Taylor Moore. Come on, everybody. Get involved. First week of January. Come on. I need you. Jesus of Nazareth, 2024, 50 golden years young. Center. Welcome to our Wednesday night service.
you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
bring our prayer requests and put them in the manger. We are believing that before Christmas, God will answer all of our prayers. As the lights in the auditorium are out, all of you that have a red card or a prayer request, you can bring them now to the manger as we worship the Lord. You say we ask not and tonight all of these requests in the manger are asking these are financial needs these are sickness needs these are needs in which our needs of our family 
and God answers prayer. God answers prayer. I would like for the elders to come and help me as we pray. And as everyone stretches forth their hands toward the manger, we're going to pray and ask God that he would touch every need. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we can come to you. You are a great God, and you are a God that is concerned about us. You're concerned about every person. And Lord, for those that come, as you have said in your word, come boldly before the throne of grace. These requests, this writing out the petition, the prayer request, Lord, this is bold. We boldly come. We place all of these in the manger. We're asking you, oh God, as you know every need and every name, we believe God. We believe God that you will answer. And we agree with every father, every mother, every parent, every son, and every daughter. We believe, God, that every request, whether it is financial, whether it is a health need, whether it is a relation in a marriage, whether it's a job, whether it's a contract, whatever the need is, God, we ask you in the holy name of Jesus that, Lord, you will supply the need. You will heal the person, every person, every need, every son, every daughter, every man, every woman. Lord, we have not read all of these, but God, you have read every one. You've said in your word, I know the numbers of hair upon every head. How you do that with nearly 8 billion people on this planet? It is so far out for us to understand the mystery of you being God. But you said it, I believe it. And if you know the numbers of hair up on our head, you have read every word, you have seen every card, and you have seen their hearts, Lord, we just ask him boldly. We're asking boldly. We're asking with our faith. At this time of celebration of birthday called Christmas, oh God, would you not answer? Let this be a season in which we'll be full of answers and these requests would be answered through prayer, through us bringing our needs to you and let every person experience in this situation their situations that there will be a miracle there will be healing there will be deliverance for God we believe you are a good God and everybody say in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we believe, Lord. We believe, Lord. As you have taught us. As you have taught us. In your holy word. In your holy word. Ask anything. Ask anything. In my name. In my name. So we declare. So we declare. As all of these cards. As all of these. All cards, of these requests. All of these requests. On the twenty-fourth. On the twenty-fourth. Of December. Of December. As we will burn all of these, as we will burn all of these, it will be a signal. It will be a signal. Our expression. Our expression. They are burned up in the fire. They'll burn up in the fire. To know you're going to answer. To know you're going to answer. Our prayer. Our prayers. And so we burn the past. And so we burn the past. To receive the future. To receive the future. Of the answer to our prayer. Of the answer to our prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for answering. Thank you for Thank answering. you for the miracle. Thank you for the miracle. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for peace. Thank you for peace. Peace in Jerusalem. Peace in Jerusalem. Peace in Ukraine. Peace in Ukraine. Peace in Chicago. Peace in Chicago. Peace in all homes. Peace in all homes. Peace in our hearts. Peace in our hearts. Peace of those watching. Peace 
and those watching and everyone here and everyone here in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we believe it will be done we believe it will be done and everybody here let's stand and let's ovate and let us clap our hands in thanksgiving to God that he will heal he will do the miracle Oh, somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you God. Thank you, God. And everybody say, amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Now, this is the last time, Wednesday night, that this will go up in prayer. And you can take a picture of it. Maybe you, maybe you had a friend to say, put my name in the manger for prayer. So you take a picture of it. You could send it to them. And tonight, we thank God. We thank God. Boy, I just want to say to everybody, there's no telling how many hundreds, thousands of cards are in that manger. We've been doing this since Thanksgiving Wednesday night. But I believe God is a good God. I believe He's going to do great things. And I thank Him. And this is just an expression. This is just an expression of bringing our needs. This is another way that we can say we're praying for one another. For all of you that are here, this hung for the last 20 days or so. We would come in in the morning to pray in the afternoon. That manger would represent, Lord, touch every need. You know, I'm glad I go to a church that somebody is praying for me. Somebody is praying for me. Somebody is concerned about me. So when this goes up on the last Wednesday night before Christmas, you can take a picture of it, send it to someone, maybe their name's in it, or you're believing and saying, your miracle is on its way. And everybody say amen. Amen. And amen. Amen.
I am the resurrection. And I am the life. Father, open their eyes so that they may see your glory. Believe in God. And believe also in me. How many is glad to be here on Wednesday night? Oh, how many is glad to be here on Wednesday night? I don't know if you can hear me or not, but... So tonight, tonight, before we bring the word, we always, every year, have something very special, and Lynn Pusey, who is a part of our uh, music and worship arts program, is a music teacher at uh, Holman and Watson Elementary School, that is in the uh, Lake Central area here in Cherville, Northwest Indiana. And she is, um, she is a dedicated, we love her. And I know uh, there are parents here tonight uh, because you're about, when the curtain goes up, you're about to see all of these elementary students that she is the music teacher of. And they're gonna perform tonight for us and we're so excited, they're children's choir. And I, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure, but I wanna ask if uh, the principal of Holman Elementary, is Kathy Tucker here tonight? Did she make it? She was, uh, is that her? Would you please stand, principal? We'd like for you to stand, we'd like to honor you. Thank you. Kathy, uh, I think I got it. Uh, Kathy Tucker, we're so glad you're here. And we're glad to have all the parents here tonight. I know you're proud of your children. We are so glad that they're performing tonight. And uh, we welcome you. And so everybody, I'm gonna tell you, we're in for a treat. So when the curtain rises, Lynn Pusey, many of you know who Lynn Pusey is. She'll be directing the children's choir. When the curtain goes up, let's welcome Holman and Watson Elementary School.
up for Lynn Pusey. So camera, if uh, the camera, if that camera over there would come over here, camera, come, come right in front here, David. And uh, everybody straight, straight up and just go row by row and just show that row. Because this will be on YouTube and this will go all over the world. All of you parents can uh, tune it in. Watch that camera. He's going to go row by row. He's going to get every one of you. Every one of you. Everybody, while they're doing that, would you stand and stretch your hands? Everybody stretch your hands toward them. How many want to bless the children? So if you stand, we're going to pray. We're going to bless the children. Everybody say, oh God, oh God. Bless, these. bless these. Bless these students. Bless these students. Let, no come. Let no harm come. We believe, Lord, we believe, Lord. You, love you love every student. Every student. Protect, them. Protect them. Let angels, Let angels. Be, around be around them. Let favor be upon them. Touch their parents, bless their parents in all that they do, in the name of Jesus, amen. I want to tell you, you did a great job. We are very proud that you are here tonight. Very proud of you parents. Very proud of the principal. And these are the next nurses, presidents, governors. These are the next leaders of the generation. So thank you very much. We're delighted you came. There they go. Come on, FCC. Give them a great big hand. Thank you, parents, and all of you. You can watch it on YouTube, FCC for me. It'll be on the air, and it'll be all over the world tomorrow. God bless you. Watch this. Mary, I've been longing to see you. Mary. How did you know? Who told you? A messenger from God. And he told me another thing. A thing even more wonderful. You're blessed among women. And blessed shall be the fruit of your womb. I too am highly favored. That the mother of the chosen should come to me. From the moment your greeting reached my ears. The child in my womb leapt for joy. My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Savior, for he has looked kindly upon the most humble of his handmaidens, and he has told me that all generations shall call me blessed. He who is mighty has done unto me a mighty thing. In the 12th chapter of Revelations and the first and second verse gives us when Jesus was born, the date, the day, and the exact time. It is the constellation. There are 48 constellations in the zodiac, or and when we say that, immediately some people get a little nervous about are you talking about uh, astronomy or astrology? 
We're talking about astronomy because astronomy, when you talk about astronomy, leads everything to the creator, which is God. Astronomy is about putting man in position above God. So there is nothing wrong in talking about the astronomy and the creativity of God. And God uses the 48, 48 constellations that are in the heavenlies. They are so big and so gigantic that the nearest star, the nearest star is 186,000 miles from earth. If you were to travel at space speed, ship spe spaceship speed at that high speed or even the speed of light, it would take, it would take 7,800 years to get to the nearest star. Those stars, as the Bible has declared, were put in place according to Psalms 8 and 3. When, when it says in Psalms 8 and 3, When I considered the heavens and thy works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou ordained. In other words, God put every single star in place. Psalms 147, 6 says, he telleth the number of the stars, and he calleth them all by their names, which is innumerable and over as far as science is concerned, can only see 400 billion stars. And the Bible said he calls them by name. He arranged the 48 cons. Uh, uh, constellations for the telling of his story of creation until the end of time. It is sad that, a, that the great creation that has been made by God and the astronomy that we learn from, for the Bible says he, we, he speaks from the moon, the stars, and the sun, Jesus refers to in Matthew when he says these words, in the last days you will see signs in the stars, the moon, and the sun. You see, astronomy was created by God so that he would reveal himself to us. And when you study astronomy, not astrology, because astrology is the anti, it is about us and not about him. And the key is in the 48 constellations that have been put in order, God is telling us a story. He is speaking to us from the heavenlies. So in that fact, we know exactly the day, the time, the month when he was born because he tells us in that in the constellation. When we read in the book of Revelations 1 and 2, we read these words. And these words in Revelations 1 and 2, and there appeared a great wonder in the heaven. This is telling us, this is a cons one of the consolations of the 48. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon the head a crown of 12 stars. And the next verse says... And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, pain to be delivered. When you put this and connect it with the consolation, you will come up with 3 BC, September 11th, on Wednesday between 625 and 720. That is the time in which Jesus was born. Now, I don't want to mess up your Christmas this weekend. But I want to tell you that he does not penalize us or is he even telling us that we are to celebrate his birthday on a certain day for we are not given those instructions. The only thing we're given instructions about his remembrance is what he did on the cross and we take Holy Communion in remembrance of him. The key is, is that he was born on the second day of Feast of Tabernacles, of blowing of the trumpets. On the eighth day, he was circumcised on the Day of Atonement. 
in 3 BC, he was born during the Feast of Tabernacles. This is said to us in Romans 12 and 1. I only brought that your attention to tell you, not to discourage you about the 25th, because I think that the Lord will take being lifted up any given time. And when we celebrate his birthday, we are lifting him up. And he says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. And isn't wonderful families come together, people come together, and we share with one another the very purpose of him, which is love, joy, and peace. Because of his birthday, he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Aren't you glad that Jesus came? Now, some of you are astonished because I said that. Some of you are saying, wow, I never knew that. I, I never. Then why the 25th? That was a traditional date that came out of 325 A.D. of the Nicene Council when, um, when Constantine was the emperor of the world, the Roman emperor of the world. And out of that came, um, came the Nicene Council and... They made that date for the 25th, and so we celebrate, and don't get shook up, and don't get too fanatical, because God has never really intended us for to target the date. We're just to celebrate. He came. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad he came? He came through a virgin birth. Here is the constellation. Here's a picture of the constellation, and if you look at the constellation this is the constellation that is in the heavens. There's the Virgo, there's the moon, there is the sun, there is the Libra. Everything that is in the skies, if you understood the stars and understood the constellation, uh, constellations, you would understand that this is the identical layout of time and how it was put. And the interesting thing about this constellation it never happened before September 11, 3 BC, and it's never happened since the stars being put in that order. God made the announcement from the heavens when his son would be born, and I'm glad that Jesus came. Anybody glad that Jesus came? So let me tell you a little, let me tell you some more information about his birth. Uh, we, are all, we are all victims of tradition, and there is nothing wrong in good tradition. So we see the three wise men and the, and the shepherds, and we see Jesus born in a stable. And that has been the tradition. And so we buy little stables. I have a little stable, and, we, you know, we, we put Jesus in that stable. And this weekend, we will have that kind of setting with the camels and the sheep and the big celebration of his birthday starting Saturday night at 5 o'clock and then Sunday morning, uh, 8.30 and 10.30, the candlelight and the angels that are going to be flying. and That's going to be spectacular. I hope you're bringing somebody to the, uh, to the Christmas Eve service that is this weekend. But let me get a little further in how and away from tradition. And again, I'm not trying to spoil your traditional thinking, but to only give you truth and to only let you know that this is very biblical. You will find that we celebrate Jesus in a stable because the Bible says there was no room in the inn. And that is true. There was no place in Bethlehem for Mary and Joseph after the 90-mile ride on the donkey from Nazareth to, to Bethlehem at, to give birth to the Son of God through Mary. The truth of the matter is, is that he was born in a tower of flock or the flock of tower. What I mean by that is that in Bethlehem, which was only five miles or four miles and can be less to pin the point of Bethlehem from Jerusalem. Jerusalem, every Passover would request from the families because they would come from all over the Middle East to give the lamb, one year old lamb, they would give to the temple at Passover because it was required all the way back to Moses, nearly 35, 4,000 years of history, 
that they would slay a lamb every Passover or you know it as Easter and they would bring, each family would bring a lamb, some families would share it, go to the priest and they would say to the temple in Jerusalem, this is our year old male lamb. It was required by the law of Moses. You might reflect on knowing that the first night that they left, they left Egypt, the Bible says that God required they would slay a lamb and the blood's lamb would be on the doorpost. And that night was considered and called Passover because the death angel, when he came through Egypt, he looked for the blood on the doorpost. If blood was on the doorpost, that means it was the lamb's blood, death would pass over and not destroy the firstborn in that household, but go into Egypt and every Egyptian home that night that had a firstborn, a firstborn dog, firstborn human, a firstborn um, any, anything they, they were affiliated with that was a part of their lives. It was killed by the death angel. Now just think about that for a moment. When you think about that the only way you're going to be able to escape death is you got to get some blood on your doorpost. He stands at the door and knocks. And when you invite him in, he identifies you with his blood. Don't ever forget this. The devil is afraid of you that believe in Jesus because the blood is on your life. Somebody say, thank God for the blood. So in the, uh, so when, when Bethlehem being so close to Jerusalem, it became a favorite place of breeding ground for the best lambs. Most people went to Bethlehem first before they went at Easter, we call it Easter or Passover, to give the lambs, to buy a lamb. The lambs in Bethlehem were a special breed. There were thousands and thousands of sheep, I mean, too innumerable, in the mountains and in the place of where the Judean hills were of sheep. Many, many shepherds begin over the years, begin to notice and begin to see that money was made on selling year-old male lambs. Now, it's important to understand that the lambs could only be one year old. They could not be two. They could not be three. They had to be a year old. So what does that mean? That means that the breeding of that, of that, of that uh, sheep must be bred at a certain time that the birthing of the lambs would be on Passover. So now only did you have sheep birthing sheep, hopefully a lamb, because the Lord would not accept a female sheep, no offense, ladies, but a female sheep he did not require. It was a male. Now, the male lamb had to be born on Passover the day before, a couple days later, because one year from birth, if it was a male lamb, it would be offered on the altar, be sold to a family, and that would be the gift in which God required so that family would be blessed. Now stay with me because it's very important. You're going to enjoy this piece of information of Revelation. I've told you when Jesus was born. He was born in B.C. 3. Uh, uh, in, in B.C. 3. He was born on September 11th. Isn't that interesting? We all know what we've had a September 11th in America but he was born in September 11th and he was born between 625 because of the constellation and the stars and how it was timed, etc. And he was born between six, um, about 635 to 715. He was born in the evening. So, so he's born in Bethlehem. In Bethlehem, they are now, they are now breeding until most of the population of the Middle East 
They did not bring the yearling lambs if it was a long ways off because the yearling lamb was too fragile in which to take the journey over 200 miles, 150 or 50 miles. It was easier to go to Bethlehem because the yearling lambs were on sale. Not only that, you could not bring, and this is very good. Now, some of you that are tight with God, you're not going to like this part. But you that freely love to give to God, you will love this part. That God would not require a lamb that had a broken leg, a, a blind eye, or a broken tooth. It had to be a perfect lamb. God did not, ex did not receive anything less. Somebody makes a hundred dollars. God says, give a tithe. And so somebody will say, I'm going to give eight dollars. I'm not going to give ten dollars. I know you can't add God. I can add. I'll cheat two dollars. That would be like giving a lamb that's got a broken leg. God wants the whole lamb to be whole so that it will not be a leftover lamb. The reason is because families were just like people who do not give their tithing, who think God is stupid and God has never went to math school and God cannot figure out the figures of 10% in one's life. So families would actually try to get by. This lamb is blind. This lamb is lame. This lamb has a bath tooth. This lamb has got a disease. It's no good to me, so I'll just give it to God. God is not interested in your leftovers. And you cannot fool God by just throwing and saying, there it is, God. God is interested in a perfect lamb. Uh, let me dwell on this a little quicker here and let me speed through this. But when you brought the lamb to the priest, the priest already knew you were messed up. By the way, all of you are messed up. And we were born into sin. So how in the world can we get to God? You bring the lamb to the priest. The priest checks the lamb out. He looks at you and your family and says, we know you're a liar. We know you're a cheater. We know you're a sinner. Oh, come on, you're holy now. But we're not interested in you because you can't save yourself. The only one that can save you is the lamb and the lamb's offering has got to be perfect. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, some of you never heard this before. And this is, this, is, this is very important for you to understand how God operates. So Bethlehem became a high breeder of great lambs. Lambs were very expensive in Bethlehem. In fact, as you move toward Jesus coming in 3 B.C., the last 100 years before 3, B, 3 B.C., uh, the, the temple priests begin to notice that shepherds became wealthy and rich because they would breed these sheep and they would, they would sell these lambs, yearling lambs, for a high price. And so you'll follow that Josephus, who is a historian for the Jewish um, history, tells us that the priests then would start ordaining shepherds to be ministers to the sheep so they could get the money to the temple. And they begin to cut out. And so shepherds actually were ordained by, by the priest that were expecting on Passover to receive the lambs because then they would get money, big money, for the lambs. This is in history. So Bethlehem was the place to get the male lambs. And I take you back. Don't lose me now. Because the male lambs would have to be born at Passover time so that one year later, they could be offered to God or sold because the lamb had to be one years old. Everybody following me? Now Jesus is in the womb of Mary, okay? Now, let me just stop and pause before Jesus is born. In Bethlehem, they begin to build what they called Tower of Flocks or Flock of Tower. It's in Scripture. I'll show it to you in a minute. 
The first one that was built was built by Jacob. In Genesis, the 35th chapter, you will find that he left his father-in-law and Jacob became, he was very wealthy and he had thousands and thousands, probably three or 4,000 sheep. And he moves back to where, to where he was raised in Palestine. And when he moves back there, he makes residence in Bethlehem, in the hills and the land of Judea. When he goes back with all the sheep, Rachel, the one that he worked for for 14 years, anybody a Bible scholar? Uh, you've, you already forgot about that. You can go back. It's, a, it's in the first book of Genesis. At least you can get that story under your belt this Christmas. And the fact is, is that he worked 14 years for Rachel that he loved. And, and to make the fast story, uh, his father-in-law, Laban, who was a crook and, and mean, uh, when he promised him to work for seven years, he could marry Rachel. Jacob loved Rachel. And, and when it came to the seven years after he had worked for Rachel, and, and he was a farmer and a, a sheep raiser and camels, and, and the Bible said that God blessed Jacob, and he even blessed him more than his uncle, who was a crook, which was his mother's brother, that when the end of the seven years contract came and the marriage was to take place with Rachel, Laban, the father of Rachel, gave his older sister in the marriage. You say, how could that happen? Because when you got married in that time, you dressed the bride from head to foot and covered them completely, that when you married them, you didn't see them at all. So when Jacob got married, he thought he was marrying Rachel. And when he got her to Motel 6 and she began to undress, it was Leah. It wasn't Rachel. In the description of the Holy Scriptures, it said that Leah, and talks about her eyes, evidently she was cross-eyed and she was ugly. This is a fact. That's what the Bible says. Jacob is very upset, goes to the Laban's father-in-law and says, I worked seven years for Rachel and you gave me this woman. I don't love her. I don't love Leah. I don't want her. She's ugly. Evidently, the conversation might have went this way. Laban said, well, I can't give her to anybody else, so I'm going to let you have her. You work another seven years and you can have Rachel. That's in the Bible. See, all of you, if you just read a few chapters, you'd get hooked and set up on Netflix. You'd get hooked upon these stories of the Bible, which are just absurd. He worked another seven years for Rachel. Bible talks about that he became very, very wealthy. And after he became wealthy, he left his father-in-law, which is 400 miles northeast. Uh, uh, he left his father-in-law, Laban, and came back home. And he was running from his brother, his twin brother. And that's another time, another story. You read that. That's, that's also interesting. His brother wanted to kill him because uh, Jacob stole his blessing and got the birthright. Does anybody read the Bible? Anybody with me? Anybody follow? So now I'm, going, I, I want, I'm saying this for a reason. This is very important about the birth of Jesus. So when they traveled to, when they traveled to Bethlehem, they got to Bethlehem. They got right at the edge of Bethlehem. Jacob did move in all of his family, all of his flocks, and by this time he had many hundreds of servants. He was a billionaire. He was a multimillionaire by this time, moving all the camels, moving all of the livestock and getting there. Uh, Rachel had become pregnant. Now, he did have sons with Leah. He did have sons with Leah. In fact, you will notice that one of the sons was named Judah on Leah. Leah gave birth to four sons, and Jacob never loved Leah. And Leah gave up on loving Jacob. And she gave birth to the fourth son, which is called Judah. Simply meaning that Leah says, he'll never love me, but I'm still going to praise God. So she names the fourth child Judah. That, don't mean, that means whatever you're going through, still have praise. Judah, the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah is the praise and the worship. It's the worshipers. Are you getting this? Are you getting a little bit of this now? So now, so now um, they get to Bethlehem, but Rachel is pregnant with the second child. Does anybody know Rachel's first child? 
Anybody know the name of his first child? Rachel's first child. Yeah, smart. Joseph. Most of you didn't know that. Please read Genesis. All you have to do is read the first few books. You don't even have to read the whole Bible. Just try to read three or four chapters of Genesis, and you will find that the first child that is born between Rachel and Jacob is Joseph. Yeah, Joseph who went to Egypt. Joseph who the brothers hated. And he had 12, he had 11 other brothers, and he was the 12th one, and he, his mother was Rachel. When they got to Bethlehem and moved, all the brothers had been born. They were different ages, and now Jacob, uh, Joseph was probably about four years old, and the other brothers ranged from, uh, from Joseph's age all the way up to in their 20s. So, so now there are 11 sons. The 12th one is getting ready to be born. She's pregnant. She's riding a donkey. She gets to Bethlehem, and she, her water breaks. Water, Rachel's water breaks in Bethlehem. And she starts giving birth. She dies at the birth of her second son. And she names him Benal. Benal. Which means I secretly have served God behind your back, Jacob. That means you can come with your husband and not really believe in Jesus. That means you can be around the atmosphere of God and have the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and still not believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, you're not following me. I've lost you somewhere. Don't you remember when, don't you remember when Laban came and said, my gods are missing. There's some images that are missing. And they were leaving town. And they made everybody dismount off of camels and horses to check the saddles out. And Rachel would not move, saying that she was on her period. Oh, you can, you can read that. I'm telling you, it's more interesting than Hugo or Hola or whatever you got going on in your streaming thing. And she wouldn't get off the camel. You know why? Because the Bible says she hid gods, meaning that she never worshipped, she never believed in Jacob's God. That means you can be in the atmosphere of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You can raise your children and they'll leave to go to college and never come back to church and never believe in God and be around the presence of God, but they have learned to worship their own gods. Oh, come on, somebody help me here now. Now watch. You say, I thought you were talking about lambs and talking about his birth. What's this got to do? Everything, listen. So Rachel gives birth to Benal. Jacob changes the name to Benjamin. And every king that's in the Bible for Israel has come from the tribe of Benjamin. Even though your mama is bad, God can redeem you and break the curse and bring a blessing. Oh, that's good right there. That's a, that'll preach for a couple hours. Now watch this. So Jacob loves Rachel. She's at the edge of Bethlehem and he builds a burial place for her and he does something else that he knows will be good and that is to build the flock of tower or a tower of flock. What is that? Well, Micah tells us about, he's a minor prophet. He's over in the Old Testament near the New Testament and he talks about the tower of flock. And he talks about, he talks about the prophecy of, of, of the one that's coming, Messiah, Jesus. He talks about it. He has several places in that book. But here he talks about the Tower of Flock. In Genesis 35, it talks about the Tower of uh, Eden, I believe it is, but it means a Tower of Flock. But here in Israel journey and spread his tent beyond the Tower of Edar. Edar there means tower of the flock. He built Rachel a tomb and then he built a tower of the flock. What's that mean? Remember, he's wealthy by sheep. So he wants to honor Rachel and it is the first tower of flock that we know. And by the way, it's still standing today. Would you like to see it? Because when I take you to Bethlehem, I'll take you to Rachel's tower. I got a picture of it here somewhere. There it is. I've been there many times. And, and it is on the edge of Bethlehem 
What is that? Not only is her tomb on the other side over there, but this is called the Tower of Flock. They built many. What's going on in the Tower of Flock? Well, what is this with Jesus' birthday, Pastor? You're really veering off. You, you got me on a rabbit trail. Hang with me. Hang with me. Because when you walk out of here, you're going to feel like you're the smartest person that's ever lived. And this is good conversation around the dinner table. And you'll blow people's mind when you begin to give them this information. What is the Tower of the Flock? What's, what's the Tower of the Flock? In that Tower of Flock, they would take the lambs, male lambs only. Soon as the male lamb was born, they would usher that mother into this tower of flock. It was like a hospital for just lambs. Where were mangers created and invented? In the tower of flock. They would tear rags and have them all spread out in the tower of flock that immediately when that sheep gave birth to a male lamb, they picked it up, they walked into the tower of flock, and they swallowed it in those claws. Oh, you're following me now. Because the lamb a year from now would bring great money. But not only that, got to make sure that lamb is perfect. So they would wrap him in swaddling clothes and they made mangers for the baby male lambs. Some of you have lost you. You went to sleep. You said, I'm sorry I can't clap. I don't follow you. These that are clapping are already saying, oh my, I'm putting the dots together here. Something going on here. There's something going on here. Now watch this. Take, take us to Micah. Do I, did I give you David Micah 4? Micah 4 talks about, talks about, this talks about where Jesus was born. Now this is going to mess your stable up. And by the way, don't let it, because I'm going to have a stable this weekend. I can't build a tower. So, but I am building a tower. You don't know that. I'm building it. Before I die, I know Melody gets worried about me. Before I die, there will be a tower in Bethlehem called the Star Tower of Bethlehem. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's another time. I've already got the plans for that anyway. Don't worry about it. You don't read that in the Bible. You're just going to see it in history. And when I build it, the whole world will know, and then you'll say, I know him. He was my pastor. Anyway, thou, watch this, O thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, and to thee shall it come. Even the first dominion. He's talking about Jesus, the Messiah. The kingdom shall come in the daughter of Jerusalem. And the daughter of Jerusalem just simply means the church in which he's going to give birth to. He's talking about him being born in the tower of the flock. Uh, you're not with me. Stay with me. I'm almost there. Mary and Joseph can't find a place, and no one has a place for Mary and Joseph. Someone comes to them and says, this is so good, whether you like it or not. Someone comes to them and says, why don't you go to the tower of flock? Which happens to be at Rachel's tomb. Which the Bible talks about, there's a night when Rachel is weeping for her children. When Herod kills the baby. Now you're following me, track with me now. And when was Jesus born? He was born when they were not using the tower of flock. Because he was born at the Feast of Tabernacle in September where the rags were hanging which were swaddling clothes and the mangers were clean and the hospital, they won't use it for another six months. It's completely empty. Oh, you're not, you're not with me. You don't believe me. You don't believe me. Then when the angel appeared to the shepherds, they said you will find him wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. They didn't go looking for him. They knew exactly where he was, the tower of the flock. Some of, you, some of you didn't enjoy that at all. That took 50 years of studying and history. You ought to be, you got that free, you tightwad, you got that free. It was 
wasn't born in a barn. God created the tower flock of a hospital. Had the, had the swaddling clothes sterilized. Had the manger, and we all say, he had no room. Well, he may not be in a room in the end of Motel 6, but God wanted him born <laughs> in the tower of flock. Wanted him wrapped in swaddling clothes like a male lamb. For ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is the lamb of God. Because I've been in church all my life. I've never heard anything like that. When you come to a church that reads and a church that understands and a church that understands Bible prophecy, you ought to just liven up to say, because let me tell you why. As they brought the lamb to the priest to make sure you didn't give a bad lamb. When, oh, this is good. When you come to God, he don't look at you. He knows you're a cheater and a liar and you've messed up, etc. He's asking you, what are you bringing me? And you bring the Lamb of God. And God said, that's my son. And he is perfect. And you can be saved. I lost a bunch of you because you flunked school. <laughs> you don't, you don't, can't keep your mind on truth and history. So he's born on September 11th, 6.45 on Wednesday, during the Feast of Tabernacles. And he was born in the Tower of the Flock. What freaks me out is the thing is still there today. And it's Rachel's tomb. God said that thing is going to stay. That thing is going to be there. And that's where I will build the star tower. Someday that the whole world. That's another thing, another time. Pretty good, eh? Uh, for you that are skeptical, for you that are skeptical, you think that those shepherds went everywhere, knock on the door, say, is there a baby here that's got swaddling clothes? <laughs> ding, 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 ding. When that angel said swaddling clothes and lying in a manger, they knew they were professionals. They said, he's at the tower of the flock. What about the wise men? They came two months later. Didn't you read that part? Wise men came two months later. After Jesus escaped and went to Egypt and then came back, then the wise men came. I don't mean to mess you up. And listen, when you come this weekend, we won't mess you up. We'll do it just the way you want it. We'll have hay, a barn, and wise men and shepherds all at the same time. And you can have fun saying, I like it that way. That's all right. It's all right. Don't, don't. Don't get panicked about it. And every person that lives, you or God will give you a dream about your future. Some of you that are over 60 years of age, you quit dreaming. And that's not the will of God. Because in the last days, old people shall dream dreams. That's not the will of God. But you've given up on your dream. Remember when you were in your 20s? You told everybody you're going to have this, 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 this. Hadn't come to pass. They said you got that, 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 that. And somewhere God heard, saw your dream. And you're carrying it. 
But because you thought the dream died. And there was no manifestations in like a woman who carries a baby and begins to grow. David's going to show you some images of Mary, Mary and Elizabeth, the pregnancies. And Elizabeth is John the Baptist's mother. And a few weeks ago I told you how that Elizabeth's husband is Zechariah, and Zechariah blows it with his unbelief, but she gets pregnant. And she has, Elizabeth is as old, and she's got to get away because of gossip, conspiracy, whatever. She has to get away carrying what God has said, your dream's going to come to pass. And her dream was to give birth to a baby. Yours might be a financial, it might be your children, it might be, all of us have dreams. And I want to say to everybody here, you have a dream. You have a dream. Don't ever give up on your dreams. They say, don't never come to pass, Pastor. You don't know who I live with. You don't know where I'm at. You don't know the curse. You know, I don't have this, I don't have that, etc. I've come tonight to reestablish and to tell you. Your dream is going to jump. It's going to jump. But it can't jump around the wrong people. And the reason why it hasn't come to pass is because you're in the wrong crowd. You can name them what you want, relatives, friends, whatever. You're in the wrong crowd. They don't make nothing jump in you. They put you down. They're jealous. They talk behind your back. They smile to your face and can't wait till you leave. Borrow money from you and never pay it back. You try to be accepted, to drink like them, to cuss like them, to tell dirty jokes like them, and try to be one of the boys or one of the ladies. But that crowd really doesn't like you, especially if you talk about your dream. Talk about something good's going to happen. My children will be highly favored and blessed. I'm going to have good health till I'm 90 and nobody's going to have anything to do with it. The doctors are going to be amazed. I'm gonna, God's going to order my steps. I will be rich. If the Listen to me. If you are born again, do you know the Bible says, I will bless you that you will give an inheritance? And you shouldn't, as a believer, die broke and your kids pay for your funeral? It ought to be just the opposite. When you die, there is stuff given away. God has blessed you. I'm going to get 25% of the audience to clap here. You know why you're not clapping? You know why? You think the dream is dead. You think it's dead. Never going to happen. Elizabeth is pregnant in about four months of pregnancy. She thinks because she's old, it's, it, it died. She hasn't felt any movement. She's not growing. It reminds me of Melody. When Melody was pregnant with Kent, Melody was not showing very much, and, and it was coming time to the nine months. And she and I talked about being concerned about this pregnancy. There was a lady in our church, her name is Delphia uh, Carlisle. She's still alive. She still goes to church. She's a Holy Ghost woman. Yeah, you have been around Holy Ghost people. They're a little unique when they cross over in the supernatural because they start talking in tongues and they, they'll, they'll start saying things. You kind of say, my God, this is weird. I got to get out of here. And most people do because they don't want the dream to live or ever to be healed. They're afraid of it. 
And I'll never, I'll never forget, it was a Sunday night. We were having church. It was at Griffith, 13 on North Broad Street. I could tell you the exact spot where Melody was standing. It was over on the, would be the south wall up toward then the front. We turned the church around a few months later, but she was over there. The altar call was given. The music was playing. The, you know, the, and Melody, I, I could see she was weeping. I knew probably why she was weeping because of the pregnancy was in trouble, what she was carrying. She was trying to be strong in faith. She was really trying to believe. I was believing. But nobody knew the conversations between her and I. And the doctor wasn't giving us any real hope. And we were waiting every day and every week that there would be some form of life. And it seemed like the baby that was in Melody died. It just, it just, it didn't. And Delphi Carlisle on Sunday night came up. Oh, I can still see it today. She comes up and the Holy Ghost is coming on her and she, her hand just is just shaking. And you may make fun of that, but let me tell you, that shake is a shake shake. And that ain't no Elvis shake. I'm telling you, it's a Holy Ghost shake. And she starts shaking her hands and she starts speaking in tongues. And she lays hands on Melody. And I'm, I'm on the platform. I can see she takes her hand and puts it on Melody's stomach and begins to prophesy over Melody and says, this baby is fine. It is a boy. It will be a highly anointed man of God. She starts going through the history of what we thought was in trouble. But if you get around the right people, Okay, I'm almost done here. Kevin, just a moment, you can start playing, but listen to this. So Elizabeth, this is going to happen. This, this is the atmosphere. This is angelic time. This is all going to happen to anybody hearing me or knowing this. Elizabeth is actually in hiding, and she's a Melody Muncie. She, Elizabeth is married to a minister. Melody is, min is married to the second minister. She's married first time to a minister. I'm the double portion, of course. God bless her first husband. Thank you, Lord, that you sought to take him home, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Good man. Candy's father. Good man. Really was. I never got to meet him personally, but... Uh, he was a great preacher, great singer. He was not as good looking. Let me tell you what. He was better looking than me. He was. He was taller. He was, he was actor ability looking stuff. He was a model looking thing. I'm glad the Lord took him home. I'm really glad the Lord. No. I'm, he was. Mary didn't, M Melody did not marry a slouch. I mean, he, was, he could sing, he could play the piano, he could preach. He was a great leader. And um, it was great. I can't, I never got to meet him personally. I never met him, but, but so many people, my friends, etc. And then Melody had his picture. Even when we got married, picture. <laughs> One day I took that picture out. I put my own picture there. I wasn't as good looking, but my picture. I may be exaggerating that, but it's fun to exaggerate. So, Elizabeth is really in quandary, and everybody here, when God tells us what happened when he came through Mary, the angel of the Lord told Mary, go to Elizabeth. Now, think about this. This girl has been told by the angel of the Lord, you're pregnant. 
She's already had a conversation with Joseph and Joseph has told her to her face, I'm going to divorce you. I'm not marrying you. You read that in the Bible. Look, if you don't read anything else, just read the first two chapters of Matthew. That'll give you enough about the divorce case on Joseph. He said, I'm going to put you away. I'm go- I'll protect you, Mary. But if anybody finds out about this pregnancy, they're, they're going to stone you. They're going to kill you, and they're going to kill me too. And I had nothing to do with this. May I say to everybody, you may not get the credit for singing, ushering, giving, coming to church. But somebody has to carry the responsibility of baby Jesus. Joseph never gets any credit. Joseph is never exalted. And until an angel comes and says, don't you dare divorce her. I want to tell you, Joseph, she has not touched a man. She has not had sex with a man. Do not be afraid. And when she gives birth to that baby, Joseph, she'll still be a virgin. And when you feel like you don't get the credit in the kingdom, trust me, God's using you to help carry the gospel and the and the kingdom. So Mary doesn't know who to go to. She can't go to her mother. She tried to go to Joseph, and Joseph rejects her. I'm not saying she's got any fear, but she's concerned. But the angel clearly said, go and find Elizabeth. She's already pregnant with John the Baptist six months ahead. Watch. This is the end. Bible said when Mary walked in, in the presence of Elizabeth, and Mary began to tell her about the salutation of prophecy being fulfilled and that she was the virgin and the angel appeared and began to give her testimony, the baby jumped. In Elizabeth, you get around Holy Ghost people. You get around the people of God. You come to church. Whether he's sitting in the back of the balcony, the power of God and being around the right people, your dream will jump. See, just for a second. I want to tell you something else. This is so outstanding, this revelation. The Bible said when Mary, guys, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because we're, we're in the dispensation of law and Mary is concerned because Joseph's rejected her and she could have been stoned. She could have been killed because under the law, if you were caught having sex, think about this. If you were caught living with somebody had fornication, you were killed, you were stoned. Let me tell you, that's the reason why they didn't have abortion and they didn't have much sex activity because children were raised. If you have sex, you don't have to worry about pregnancy. You got to worry about them taking you to a stone pit and killing you. So when a guy has tried to come on to a girl, she's saying, keep your hands off me. I don't want to be killed. That's under the law. Mary is in this predicament. But I want to show you something. When you have Jesus, let me tell everybody something. When you have Jesus, there will always be a predicament. There will always be a Herod that wants to kill you. 
in the Jesus that you have in your spirit. But God will always take you around the right people. And this is good. This is the last point. I hope you all will get this because this is a real revelation. We're still in the dispensation. When Jesus was born, we're in the dispensation of the law. That dispensation will not change till Jesus gets on the cross and he dies. And the minute he dies, dispensations will change. For you that are Bible scholars, you know, from law to grace. We are in grace. So when somebody said, well, what about the man on the cross? He didn't have to be baptized. He was saved before the dispensation of grace. In grace, you must be baptized. Well, somebody talk to me. So when somebody said, well, the man on the cross, he got saved. He didn't need to be baptized. That was before grace. Let me help you a little bit. When Jesus was on that cross, he was going to end the law of dispensation. Grace was getting ready that we live in to come to pass. When law got the top of Golgotha and was standing there saying, who are you? I wrote about you, but are you really the one? Jesus then calls for grace. Grace walks up and law and grace is standing right in front of that crucifixion. And before he says it's finished, he gives grace a job to do and tells law, you're going to die, but grace, you're going to live. But grace, when I say it is finished, I need you to go to the temple and take the veil. (laughs) Because there was thousands of years in the holies of holies when the priest would go back there and he'd move his legs and the bells would go ding-a-ling-a-ling and they would ask him, what's it feel like back there? I don't know, my God. I'm telling you, there's something back there. And you know what was back there? It was the Holy Ghost. It was divine healing. It was deliverance. Oh, it was grace and mercy. And it was saying, get me out of here. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. And when the priests would go back, they can't see me, guys. That curtain is closed. No wonder they can't get into church here. Bible says, and yet, you have to know what's happening in the holies of holies. Watch this. You ready? This is free. I said I'd be done in a second, but you got, this is so good. You got to hear this. When the priests would get in the holies of holies once a year, divine healing would shake them. Hey, get me out of here. Tongues, Holy Ghost, power of God, the gifts of the Spirit, mercy and truth. Grace, forgiveness seven times 70. Get me out of here. And the priest would sprinkle lamb's blood. And, and, and grace would say, that's not good enough. Go out there and give me some more blood. But when Jesus told grace, take my blood. I want you to tear the veil from the top to the bottom. I want you, my God, hallelujah. I want you to let what's behind the holies of holies out of that place that everybody can freely have the grace of God. Stand to your feet and clap your
And Law was standing there when he said, It is finished. And the Bible said he bowed his head. He didn't give up because he bowed his head. And his eyes landed right on Law. What about it? It's over for with you. It's over for you. People died without mercy. People went to hell without mercy. But it's over for you. I fulfilled it. Grace, let's go wild. Let's save people that feel like they don't even have a chance. Let's forgive people over and over. Somebody needs to clap their hands and say, thank you for the grace of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. And all of you, including me, would have already been stoned and dead. But for the grace of God, here I am tonight. And I may fall down, but he said I can get back up. He said, if you fall down seven times, get back up. And for the grace of oh, somebody, I want to get somebody's baby, somebody's dream to leap. And tonight I pronounce the 2023 Christmas miracle. Lift your right hand. Your baby. Some of you for years have been believing for. Your baby is going to leap. And the Bible said Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. That in itself is a great message. God took Elizabeth in a split moment and took her out of the dispensation of law and put her into grace. Meaning, God's about to change your situation. And what you thought was dead is alive. Somebody join up right now. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Okay, everybody. You say, well, Pastor, what should I do when you put that blessing in my babies and my dreams are going to come to pass and I'm excited. You do what Mary did. Read it. What did she say? Oh, magnify the Lord. She said to Elizabeth, oh, I magnify the Lord. Say it with me. Oh, magnify the Lord. And in this season, your baby, your dream, your prayer request, what you've been, oh my God, I feel like running, shouting, doing something here. It's going to be answered. And I've come to tell you, you came to the right place around the right people. So somebody shout a great big hallelujah. Christmas Jesus wow turn to somebody and say my baby just leaped just say that my baby just leaped my dream you may be seated as the ushers come how many love to give to God how many love to give to God Let's give a gift. It's Wednesday night before Christmas. Let everybody that's watching me reverence this holy season. Let us reverence that he came regardless of the dates we celebrate. I'm just glad we celebrate. That's not the issue. The issue is we love him. And I want to tell somebody tonight you're going to be healed going to be delivered somebody tonight when you go back to the doctor this time because of what happened tonight they're going to say you're getting better or they, we can't find it or something's going on I want to tell somebody tonight God's healed your mind God has healed your spirit I want to tell somebody tonight 
favors upon you and you're going to another level. I want to tell somebody tonight, things are going to happen to you. It's going to blow your mind. As you're reaching for the check or the phone or you're reaching for an offering, we give to God. Thank you, Lord. Break the unbreakable. be real but I take it as a sign I just take it as a sign prosperity oh, you can make fun of me all you want but God's able to do all kinds of things thank you Lord. everybody giving everybody say I love to give, I love to give. so I gotta tell you something they're almost done and I'm gonna say amen so I, I go to the car wash over here at uh, what's the name of that station that all of you buy cheap gas from that's 66. The one right here in Munster. What is it? Is it Exxon? It's the one all you Illinoisans know about. So they got a car wash in there. It's good, it's good car wash. I like the car wash. Come on. Offering. Go pray. Thank you. Balcony give. All the balcony give. All the balcony that gave, say amen. Good. So when I go through the car wash, there's a young man or there's several young men that do this, but they guide me in. I've already paid for my car wash, but I always roll down the window and I always give them a tip. They're always amazed. But every time I give them a tip, I roll the window up and say, I'm going to get you. You're going to get saved. Nobody got excited for me to say that. On you. So I tip them. Every time I go to that car wash, I tip them. And I know nobody else tips them. Because it's a, it's a cheaper car wash, and that's really why you go there, because it's cheaper. But it's good. So you don't have to tip anybody. But I do it anyway. I do it every time I go through. Many times I've, walked, I've, I've went through the car wash and said, Lord, Am I doing a good thing? Am I? I really want to reach these young men. I always tell them, I'm the pastor, I'm the church, I'm the guy right there. They smiling. When they see my car coming, brother, they smiling. They, 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 they rubbing my car down. They're not even supposed to touch my car. Today, I was at the car wash. The young man stopped me and said, I was at your church Sunday. He 
said, I sat right behind the sound booth. And I know one of the guys up there named David. This is the truth. This happened to me today. You know what he said? I heard you say something about a warehouse. You keep all that stuff in a warehouse. Is that, is that over here? Of course, he works there. Is that? Yes, sir, that's right. It's right over there. 7,000 feet. Then he looked at me. And he said, how can I get involved? Can I, can I do something? I said, yeah, you can be a soldier in Jesus of Nazareth. He might be here because he's been coming late. He said, you can count on me. Because he said, I felt something when I came to your church. And something happened to me that I should get involved. I gave you, I've been giving tips maybe for two years, that same guy. But I noticed something happened the last three or four times. He would say, Pastor, don't give it to me. Put it in the offering. I said, no, I got to give it to you. Why don't you come and bring it in the offering? Let me tell you something. There's somebody you don't even know or do know that when you get around, their baby jumps. They don't understand who you are, but there's something about you. Spread love, joy. This is how we will reach people. Be kind. If you make money, don't be a tightwad. Give some of it away to somebody that needs help. Make their day. Do something nice for them. You say, but I don't get anything in return. Don't do it to them. Do it like it's Jesus. For when you've done it to the least, you've done it to me. So everybody on the 6th of January, I expect everybody to get involved. Your children. Melody and I will be here on the tryout to the 50th year. Usually I'm not here on tryouts, but I'll be here this year on that Saturday. Get everybody. You don't have to be saved to be in Jesus of Nazareth. Be a witness. And everybody say these words. I have Jesus. I have Jesus. And wherever I go, and wherever I go, babies, babies dreams, dreams, jump. jump. And they may not know why something is that way, but when you got Jesus everywhere you go, He always does a work at the store, in the neighborhood, wherever you are, Jesus floods wherever you are. If you're excited about Jesus, jump to your feet and give him one more big hand clap of praise here tonight. Thank you. Everybody say, oh Lord, oh Lord bless the offering. Bless the offering. Stay there, right there. Do you know why I had this elementary public school sing tonight? And you might have probably said, they didn't sing any religious songs. I didn't care if they sang religious songs. I could sing religious songs. Our kids can sing religious songs. But there's about a hundred parents over here. And they're never going to forget that manger and us praying for their children. So tonight... We made somebody's baby jump. So everybody say with a loud voice, I'm going to have the best, the best. Christmas, Christmas. Love, love, joy, joy. Peace. peace, and it doesn't matter, and it doesn't matter. of the gift I already got, I already got. The, gift the gift of life and I am happy, I am happy about, that. about that and everybody shout a great big hallelujah, hallelujah. turn to somebody and say Merry Christmas I'll see you Saturday night Sunday morning Oh, 
I felt very strongly about tonight. I, I, there's a release that is upon you. There is a move of, of, of the word of the Lord to tell you that something has jumped in your spirit. The miracle is alive. It is full. Your miracle is full of the Holy Spirit. It's financial healing, deliverance, breaking that habit. There is right now in motion God's presence going forth to do what we have agreed and we release that. I just really sensed what a great service. What a great, powerful service. I want to say to everybody that this weekend is going to be great. This is Christmas spectacular, Christmas Eve. No one should miss church. This is the celebration of Jesus' birthday. We have our Christmas trees, got one right behind me. We have our family reunions, our opening of Christmas gifts, usually on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning. We have our dinners planned. We have our plans to go to this house and that house. But let me say this, it's not our birthday, it's Jesus' birthday. We must, at all cost, take and say we must go and celebrate his birthday. We're happy to announce we have three opportunities. We've had another service Saturday at 5 p.m. Christmas Spectacular, the horse and carriage that Melody and I will personally ride in to greet you. Oh, you'll see Scrooge and what happened to him, Mary, Joseph, the camels, the horses, the candlelight, the flying angels, and the story and the celebration, and the great, great honoring of saying Jesus happy birthday. You don't want to miss it because it is going to be totally different for you that have come in the last few years. Christmas Spectacular this year is going to be great with singing the choirs and all that we have to offer. This is going to be a blessing to you. Invite your friends. Now this service is only going to last about an hour and 10 minutes because of the power packed, all the things that we do. We want to focus in on the birthday of Jesus Christ. So come see the camels, the donkeys, the costumes, the singing, the music. You and I even get to have worship in singing Christmas carols together in His presence. Please, please, may I remind you, it's His birthday. Three services, Saturday, 5 p.m., Sunday morning, 8.30, 10.30, streaming continues at 12.30. Don't miss, it's this weekend. We work very, very hard to make the celebration of the birthday of Jesus Christ great. Come, come bring your friends, family, every seat is free. It will be incredible as we say, Jesus, happy birthday together in the house of God. Can't wait to see you this weekend. God bless you and have an incredible miracle day in your life every day in Jesus' name.